Last but not least, let us welcome to the stage our fifth and final speaker, Lou Tiffany, who will be sharing about ChatGPT. What does it mean for our future? Good afternoon, Wellspring Saigon. How are you doing? Thank you so much for being here today, and I'm incredibly honored to stand in front of all of you guys to share my story today. So, I have two little brothers at home, a five-year-old, and an even younger one who's only two. And you know kids these age, right? They're incredibly curious about everything around them. And they're not afraid to try, and then fail, and try again, and then fail again. So my five-year-old, when he first discovered the phone, of course, by discovering it, I meant flooding the device full of selfies of his own. But then, he would, whenever I come home, I would find him watching something, or playing something, or trying to make Siri rap the alphabet for the 10,000th time. But you see, whenever I tell people about this little hobby of his, they would tell me that, well, kids get attached to these devices very easily, very quickly. So maybe it's best for me to just make him avoid it and like stay away from it. And I thought, well, maybe some of what they say is true, but I can't recall a time where my brother was trying to, you know, figure out the new features of this device without a smile on his face. So I knew that I could not make him avoid this completely. One time, my family and I were trying to look for a restaurant, right? And apparently we were pretty indecisive, having huge flashy signs screaming at us left and right. But then, my brother stood up and he pointed to one and shouted out his name. And I looked to my mom and I was like, whoa, you taught him how to read? That's amazing. But then she was like, oh, not really, no. Not really? Then how? Well, you know all those you know, online videos you watch and those Netflix shows? Now, if we lived in a society a hundred years ago, and I told you that a child taught himself to read using online videos, you would have told me I was crazy, right? But not now. We are lucky to be in a society today where we have gone so far on our journey of advancing our technology to where its presence is almost in every aspect of our lives. Just back in 1876, the first telephone came out, and it allowed people to connect with each other and to listen and talk, even though we were miles apart. And rushing about a century later, the internet was born, and we were able to connect globally, no matter where we are, what time it was, to our loved ones, or even strangers we've never met in real life. And walking closer to the reality that we all live in today, in 2017, artificial intelligence was born. And today, there has been this new technology that's been on the lips of almost every reporter that you meet. So, through a quick show of hands, can someone tell me, have you ever heard of ChatGBT? Wow, okay, thank you so much. But what is ChatGBT really then? ChatGBT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. But what does it mean? So imagine combining the brains of millions of anxious students trying to work on an important term paper, right? So it will scan information across millions of websites, articles, in order to formulate a detailed response to your question in a matter of seconds. You could ask it any question across almost any topic you can think about. For example, writing a thousand-word essay on the Civil War or write me a song in the style of Michael Jackson, if he was still here today. And so many people have already used this tool for many various reasons. For example, to write blogs, to set a schedule, to set reminders, etc. Have you ever heard of like Facebook or Instagram and stuff? Well, Facebook took 10 months to reach 1 million users. That took Spotify 5 months, and Instagram took 2 months. ChatGBT took five days. So along with its immense popularity, a lot of questions are being raised about its ability to affect the human lives. According to study.com, a, a research has shown that 26% of teachers in America have caught at least one student cheating using ChatGBT. Why? Okay, so imagine if you are a student 
and you are given assignment to research about ChatGPT. Hmm. You know, I've heard about this phrase a few times, right? And apparently, people say it's a game changer and changes our future, all those stuff, right? So, okay, I'm a little bit curious about how it's going to affect my life, but oh, I have such a long paper to write. I don't have time for this. You know what? I'm just going to copy and paste everything, right? Sounds familiar? Well, a lot of us are turning to like Google and other search engines for automatic responses to our problems, right? And we justify our actions with uh, the purpose of like saving time, saving energy, etc. But what we what it really does is shuts down that thought process that was designed to train our brain to solve even more complex problems. That we actually face in real life, and it shuts down that little spark of curiosity that we had at the very beginning. So many people are wondering: Is ChatGPT or AI in general doing us more harm than good? Is it robbing us of our own motivation to learn, robbing us of our creativity, critical thinking? Well, I can't blame you for having this thought, right? So, ever since we were little, when we watched like sci-fi shows or Sci-fi books or stuff, you know. For example, like Wally, -E. like Wally, -E, right? Then it would um, it will end up a world where technology takes over the world and leaving humanity in like a lazy, dependent mode with no purpose. And this was a fear shared by numerous people, and I was no exception. But then, a few a few months ago, I came across a quote. By Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he said that when students cheat, it's because the school system values grades more than the students value learning. So the question was never how are students going to cheat; it was why would students cheat at all? You see, if the purpose of school was to learn, and if the purpose to, of teaching was to inspire, was To share knowledge was to share experiences. Then no technology or no societal change was going to get in the way to our path of growth, our path of inspiration. You see, back when I was in elementary school, an old teacher would tell me a short story that I loved. So two twin boys was、um, had an alcoholic father. Right, and every day they would have to watch their father coming back at like two, three a.m. They would yell at them for no reason, and then sometimes might even end up hitting their mother. It was a tragic experience that no child should have to go through. But then years later passed, and they both grew up. One became an alcoholic. People ask him why, and he said, "Because my father was an alcoholic." The other one also grew up, and he swore to himself he would never, ever drink. People asked him why, and he said, "Because my father was an alcoholic." Same upbringing, same environment, different mindsets, different outcomes. So you should find your purpose, find your why in the actions that you take, because that is what's going to direct the course of your life. No matter, no matter what comes, what life throws at us, right? If we if we keep us true to ourselves, if we keep pursuing our passions, keep pursuing our values, then no matter what technology seems to be taking away our motivation or making everything instant for us is going to take away our value or taking away the purpose in our tasks, our everyday tasks, in the value that we have in our lives right here. You know that not, nothing is perfect, and no one is flawless, right? Imagine this is a real example of ChatGPT given. You see, it can even respond in a human-like manner, right? But like it said. This information is only updated into 2021, and a lot of people have been finding its inaccuracies. But this is not uncommon. You see, in all search engines that we have, you see, like Google. Do you actually believe that everything there is true? No. 
right? But we still have to use it either way. So we have to learn to be skeptical, learn to think critically in order to stay safe and in order to leverage the tools that we have. Whenever you cross the street, right? So if someone shouts out at you, hey, look to your left, or hey, look to your right, are you going to just look to your left or just look to your right thinking, well, this is the better way to look at? No, right? You will end up getting crashed because you know that you have to look both ways when you cross the street. There's always two sides to the same situation. Will you look at something that can be seen as a threat to avoid, as an obstacle to fight life against, or will you see something as an opportunity to enhance the quality of your life? The choice is yours. Thank you very much.